All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to import an MP3, a, a full song, an old soul song, and we're going to chop it. So we're basically going to sample, it's basically just like sampling vinyl, except if you have an MP3 or whatever, which is really convenient. A lot of people these days are e-digging for samples. However you want to sample is up to you. I don't really care if you want to sample from vinyl, from that soul record you got at the thrift store for 25 cents, do it. If you want to e-dig, do it. Whatever you want to do. You know, it's your, it's your, your thing. Roll with what works for you. With me, I have a lot of MP3 uh, soul albums because I like to listen to a lot of music digitally. And so we're just going to import an MP3 into Reaper's track, and then we're going to chop it using Reaper, and then we're going to import those those slices or those chops into into poise pads, poise poise cells or pads, whatever you want to call them. Now, there's a guy on YouTube who already who already talked about this. He doesn't have a lot of views for his video, but I think it's really informative and it's quite straight to the point. The only reason I wanted to basically do exactly what he did is because since this is a poise tutorial series, I wanted to cover everything that I think the where the VST excels in. Okay, basically anything that a hip hop producer would want to do, you know, like chop old soul songs you know, build drum kits, layer their drums. You know, I just wanted to kind of cover all the basics of hip hop production using this VST. All right. That said, we're going to open up Reaper's browser. Okay. We're going to grab this one. This is a, this is a sample by Milt Jackson called Olinga. And this is something the tribe called Quest used. Here's, here's a sample that I just imported into Reaper, okay? I have Poise Minimized, and this is, again, a Milt Jackson song called Olinga. And what we're going to do is I always have my grid on in Reaper, as you can see, the grid lines. I'm going to turn them off because I want, want to be able to get in there and chop, you know, with ease. So basically, I think these are these uh, this beginning intro is great for chopping. Let's take a listen to it. Okay, right there. Perfect. You know what I mean? So, I'm going to ignore the... Yeah, there we go. Now, what I'm doing in Reaper is I'm hitting S to chop, to slice, basically. That's what it means, like like split or slice, okay? And I'm taking this little piece right here, just the intro, all right? And I'm just looking for my transients. And I'm just kind of splitting where they are. And if I'm a little off, no problem. I'll show you why poise is cool for that in a second. Hang on, let me get these so you can see them. And here's the, the last of it. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so I got five different chops from this song. Now, open up poise and it's gonna block it's gonna block what I had before. Not a big deal. So so now, okay, there you go. You can see poise and you can see where I chopped that MP3 in Reaper. Okay. So I'm gonna use the top row, uh, basically five different cells, um, to use these five different chops. And all we gotta do is we hold control alt in Reaper. And then we left click drag into a poise cell because poise can't import mp3s but if you control alt drag it renders the file to wave so poise can read it okay and again the, the one guy who did a tutorial uh, which i will link to uh explained it really well but i'm just including this in here to show you guys how i do it basically the same exact way all right here's chop two Dragging it into poise using control alt. Chop three, dragging it into poise using control alt. Uh, chop four, dragging it in. Chop five, dragging it in. Okay. Now, here's what's cool about poise. This is what I love. All right. Now we have. Whoops. Wrong track. All right. Hang on. In poise, here's my chops. Now notice I didn't really get the uh, 
you know, the chops set right, but that's cool because poise, you can fine tune it in poise, which is awesome. Okay, so basically, first I want to make these as one shots because one shots are how I usually like to trigger my samples. So I'm just going to highlight all the ones that I dragged in, right click, play mode one shot because I, I, I changed it to note on for a demonstration before. And voice mode mono, cool, that works. And I'm going to make these all in the same choke group. So again, clicking and dragging. Cut one. Oh, you can't really see it in poise, but at the bottom of poise, um, I'm, I, I changed each of those cells to cut one and cut by one. So let's move poise up again. So you can see, if I can line it up, pretty much dead center. Okay. So right here, I... Once again, I highlighted these, highlighted all these clips. I went to cut one, cut by one, which is already selected. Now, if I hit these, they cut each other off, and they're also one shots, meaning they'll play as long as they need to, even if my finger's off the pad. Okay, now, fine tuning your chops. This is what's great. Now, that doesn't look that good, so I can use the mouse to zoom in and see this vertical line right here? I could drag it and get a good chop, like a good start point. So as soon as I hit the pad, it plays a sample. Same thing applies with this one. I missed that one too. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I can see where the transient starts, basically right there. All right. Same one with this one. This one's way off. Zoom in. Move the start sample start. Zoom out. Same thing with this one. You don't even have to zoom in. You can just drag it, you know. And this one right here, this this uh, this fifth chop. Okay, so that's cool as hell. That's really easy. But here's where I really love poise. These sample start, sample end indicators, and the zoom, and scrolling. So watch, we zoom, and then the scroll bar appears, like the left and right. All of these things are MIDI mappable, okay? Now, nobody's done a video about this yet. Uh, the first person who, who introduced me to Poise and pretty much most of the world was St. Joe over at soundsandgear.com. What's up, brother? Um, he, his videos are always really informative and awesome, and I really love everything he does. But in the Poise demo that he made, he was using a really old version, which didn't even have this stuff MIDI mappable. So... So, but what's cool is these things are MIDI mappable again. So, if I right click the waveform window in Poise, MIDI learn, sample start, right? And I already assigned it to my MIDI controller, okay? Because I'm using MIDI, I'm using machine as my MIDI controller in MIDI control mode. And I have some of the rotaries set to my Poise stuff. So basically like, what's cool is you go to MIDI learn, if you have a MIDI controller with rotaries or knobs, encoders, whatever you want to call them, you just click that and it says learning MIDI controller so it's waiting for MIDI input I basically turn the knob bam you know like I can use this this knob on machine to control my sample start and endpoint without using the, ma the mouse at all same thing applies to MIDI learn sample end MIDI controller you know I, I turn the knob on my MIDI controller there it is boom you know what I mean so easy MIDI learn sample zoom we'll make it this button or this this knob Great, you know, we can zoom in and out, you know, without touching the mouse. You know, right click, MIDI learn, sample scroll. We'll do this button, this uh, rotary right here. Now, obviously, it's mapped, but it doesn't work unless it's zoomed in. So now, yeah, see, once you get a, you can see the waveform, you, you can scroll left or right. So it's really amazing. I love that about Poise. It saves so much time. So... Basically, like the way I showed you guys before was I was using my mouse to set my sample start and end points, but I'm going to show you right now since everything's mapped. Here's sample one. Turn the knob. Say I want to say I want it real short. Say I want it like this. Just, you know what I mean? Here's sample two. Say I don't want it to decay as long. I set the sample end to right here. So it cuts off. Okay. Now what's cool about poise is every time I hit a new pad, it be, uh, the waveform shows the last pad that I hit because it, under menu we have select pad with MIDI notes on. That's so convenient. So anything you want to edit, 
you know, it's ready to edit. So here's pad, here's that pad. There's the waveform. I want to change it to a tiny little, little thing. Super tiny. You know what I mean? Whatever. And this is, this is also cool but confusing. Sample start and sample end can get mixed up. So right now my sample start is, you know, you could, you could pass it, which is kind of cool. So if you get lost, you can just kind of, you know, turn your sample start to the left, turn your sample end to the right, and that, that way you, you know exactly where they are. So right here, I'm just kind of making the sample real short. It's just boop, boop, boop. All right. Here's this one. Say I want to pitch this one up. I'll pitch it way up to seven or eight. Okay, so we got, I set those with all the knobs, and I got that. Just made it a different pitch. This one right here, obviously that, that one sample start position is kind of off, so I'm just going to turn my knob a little bit, fine tune it. There it is. And it remembers everything. So it's a global MIDI mapping of sample start and endpoints and sample scroll and sample zoom that works for whatever pad you last hit. Here's an awesome thing. This is another reason why I love Poise. I have been, like, I, I was an Ableton user a couple years ago, and I posted so many times on their forums, can you make the drum rack and the simpler, you know, MIDI mappable so you could do the MIDI map start and endpoints, and Ableton 9 came out recently, and they still haven't done that. You know, it's just, I mean, I understand that a lot of people use Ableton for DJing, but some people like to do hip-hop production with it. But I just think it's just it's just too much mouse. You know what I mean? With poise, you know, if you get an awesome MIDI controller with the pads and the knobs, you barely touch the mouse. You only use it to drag in samples. You know what I mean? To to each poise cell. So I so kudos yet again to one small clue and Shannon over there and down in Australia for making such a great VST that is completely useful, extremely affordable, and awesome. So that said, all right. So we basically just built. We just built a chop, you know, we used an MP3, and we dragged these in. This is, again, an old soul song. And we used, we MIDI mapped our our MIDI controllers, you know, so we could not even use the mouse for a sample start and endpoints. So convenient. You can MIDI map pretty much anything you want, like the global pitch, and, and by global I mean per pad, okay? You could, you could... MIDI map the volume, the balance, anything in here is MIDI mappable, like MIDI learn, see? So I'm clicking, you know, the pitch envelope, whatever. I don't even mess with this stuff half the time. But if you got a bunch of knobs, you just MIDI map the whole shit, you know, label them with sticky tape or whatever, or uh, masking tape. Bam, you know what I mean? So, that's really cool. Yeah, I think that basically covers the basic functions of poise. I mean, in tutorial one, we had um, building a drum kit and saving it. Tutorial two, you know, using pre-made one-shots, uh, royalty-free uh, one-shots, dragging them in, setting choke groups, setting it to note on or one-shot, depending on how you want to, you know, perform it, perform your chops. And in this tutorial, we learned how to drag, um, how to how to how to split or slice an MP3 and drag those chops into poise. Um, and then just kind of MIDI map our stuff, you know what I mean? Like MIDI map the sample start and ends. So those three things are pretty much essential for hip-hop production.